Right, so we've dismantled one of the original carbs and here we have a replacement Premier carb. So we're going to compare the Premier with the original. <clears throat> First of all, they look pretty similar. Now, at the moment, these Premier carbs are cast from uh, an alloy, which I think is Mazak or very similar to Mazak. So it's a soft metal. Uh, my understanding is that later this year, that's uh, 2021, um, they are going to change to uh, aluminium bodies, which will be um, hopefully even better than these uh, for more accurate sort of machining and also less tendency to war wear <coughs> and so on. But at the moment, I think the bodies are basically the same as uh, the originals. Note that they're still made in England. They've always been made in England, eight miles. I'm not sure in this day and age if that's good or bad, but that's, that's the way it is. So we've got the extended tickler, same as that. The uh, pilot screw and so on. Now the main difference that we have between uh, the two carbs is the screw here. If you see on the original carb, it's just blank, it's just empty. Now that is the pilot screw on a, uh, a Premier and the pilot, um, the, sorry, that's the pilot jet. That is the pilot jet, excuse me. That's actually the pilot jet itself. On an original, the pilot jet is actually down inside the body and so can't be changed. And that's the problem, as I said before, with um, them blocking up. It's very difficult to clean them out. But with a Premier carb, then it's quite easy, A, to clean the jet out by removing it, and B, to actually replace the jet in the first, uh, completely replace the jet. Because this is the jet. Okay, so there you can see it's a screwing replacement jet. Right. Yeah, I've just checked, and these, uh, and the fact that it's got three rings on it. Let's see if I can get the damn thing to focus. Come on, focus. Right? Can you see there are three grooves there? So that means this is a nineteen pilot jet. One, one groove would mean it's fifteen. Two is seventeen, and three is nineteen. So I'm surprised at that because last time I spoke to Amal, they said they were fitting seventeens. I've got nineteens on my T160. Um, but they told me that they tried 19s but were fitting 17s as standard. So I'm waiting for them to get back to me with clarification on that. Okay, but the thing to notice is you can change the size of your pilot jet dead easy by simply by simply changing this and screwing it in. Okay, so that's the pilot jet. Apart from that, carbs look much the same. So let's take the uh, tops off. Can we see this? Yeah. It's all right. It's very, I know it seems obvious, but I can't see what's on the camera. And I've tried putting the camera in front of me, and then, of course, I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> the thing is, I just mentioned, you think about the camera i try putting it in front of me now the, the thing is i can't actually see the the, the the picture on the back of the camera or i only see half of it because i've got this damn tripod and the bracket that holds the camera takes up most of the back of the uh, of the you know the camera of the phone so i can only see the little edges so you know if i put the camera in front of me i can't see what i'm doing <laughs> at all anyway by the by right we've got top off Let's put it the same way around as the uh, as the other one at the top of the. Okay, so we've got the top. Then comes the choke. Now, the choke on this is coming off separate because, of course, we still got the, the chokes attached to the tops on the originals. Um, so that's the choke. Okay, then we've got the spring, same as on the original. Notice. There's no throttle rod because 
they're specific to the trident so that they don't actually the carbs never come whichever carbs you buy they don't come with these throttle rods okay they're a separate they're a trident part rather than an amal part if that makes sense and of course what we haven't got are these damned springs and collets which uh, just drive it at the wall uh, right so spring and then we should have yeah then we've got slide and needle okay so to begin with I think the first thing you can see is that the uh, the throttle slide is made of I tell you what it's about half the weight literally probably less than that it's made of a different material I think it's, al it's anodized aluminium not sure what these are made of some kind of alloy maybe again probably mazak alloy um, <clears throat> these are anodized aluminium so lighter and um, apparently less prone to wear which obviously is good news uh, when these are made from aluminium as well then I think we'll have minimal wear um, but that will probably be a couple of months apparently okay then we've got the uh, needle with the clip and the clip on these is on second which I think is the correct position second groove okay again can I get that to focus uh, second middle groove okay now the uh, when I took the rigid knees apart they're on uh, top groove which means it's on it's that's this leanest setting because the lower the needle goes the less fuel comes up and I'm not sure why I'll check the other carbs it's not unknown to find different carbs set at different levels I'm fairly again I'm going to check this I'm fairly sure that middle clip is standard okay good then we got the body <clears throat> and we'll take the float chamber off Check we're still on camera. I think we are, yeah. Okay, so we've got basically the same float bowl as the original, but the internals are slightly different. So uh, I think this is a stay up float, it's not hollow. Okay, so if it gets uh, holes or whatever, it will. It doesn't matter. It'll still, it'll still work. Unlike the originals, if they do get hold, then they don't work. And then, of course, we've got the uh, float needle, metal with uh, neoprene tipped, which gives good sealing. Unlike this strange, <laughs> rather uh, sorry-looking plastic affair that would serve with the originals. Okay, so that's good. So we've got uprated float and, and needle. And then we've got the um, uh, main jet and needle jet. And they're exactly the same as the originals. The only difference being that they're new, which is important in some ways so 150 main jet and yeah 106 needle jet okay so that's the comparison really of uh, between the um there's a gasket on there i'm just going to take it off to say you're getting damaged or lost that's the uh, comparison between the two carbs so in many ways these two are the same same bodies same float bowl but in other ways they're different um, because the different float, especially you've got the pilot jet, you've got the different slide. Let's check these are three and a half. No, they're four. Now, again, I thought that fours are uh, were standard for the T160, whereas these are three and a half. I'm feeling that these carbs, I'm not sure. I think that those carbs are off a T150, but I'm, I don't know. Because I think the T150 has a, uses a three and a half cutaway, and maybe a different needle position. I'm I'm not sure, but that's that's what I'm thinking that there may maybe that because it should be needle, it should be a middle position. And I'm pretty sure standard is a four cutaway as as these are for the T160, different for the T150 for reasons I don't know. Okay, so. 
Should we, here's a $64,000 question, should we buy a new Premier Carb or have our originals reconditioned? Now, uh, there are various people who recondition original carbs, one of them being Richard Darby at 3D Motorcycles. Now, he will recondition your carb, and that means, so that will uh, bore out the, the body to make it nice and cylindrical, and then sleeve it, or no, I don't think, I'm trying to, anyway, then, no, then he'll sleeve the original uh, slide, I think. Anyway, it'll be re-sleeved, and so you'll have a perfect fit, so it won't leak, or, leak air anymore. And, here's the big thing, he will also, if you want to, he will drill out this uh, blank, and as with the Premiers, he will fit a new a removable pilot to air screw, which is a vast improvement. So, you could go that course, or you can buy new. Now, it's one of those you pay your money and it takes your choice. Now, if Richard Darby was going to do that, it works out, I think, at about £85 per carb to have them uh, um, bored out, you know, re-sleeved, and then also for the, um, for the new pilot jet to be put in. Whereas a brand new Premier is 160 so so getting on for twice the price. But the other thing you have to bear in mind is that this whole carb is new. So that means you've got new floats, you've got new main jet and needle jet, you've got a uh, new needle and also springs in that, although they're not so uh, important. And of course you've got a brand new body, you've got a, you know that the flange here is flat, you know that this flange is flat because also one thing that happens with these carbs is people over tighten this flange, it's a classic one, and it bends the flange and so you get oil leaks in there. That's a sort of classic for the AML. And also even even people over tighten the float bowl and so that can leak because again that will bow. Apparently with the aluminium bodies that are coming, again it's far uh, harder to, to do you know, for it to, that to happen, so that's even better. But you know that so you if you buy a new carb then you don't have to apply the you don't have to replace the float you don't have to replace the float needle you don't have to replace the jets you don't have to replace the uh, uh, throttle needle you don't okay and obviously and also this is a different anodized anodized aluminium so it's going to wear less anyway so if you want to have this reconditioned and then replace the needle and so on that's going to cost you about another 40 quid one way or another. So then you're up to about 125 quid as opposed to 165. Then, of course, you haven't cleaned the car body. Uh, so if you want to get it nice and clean, you have to pay or, you know, to get that clean. Then it's difficult because you don't really want to jet blast them because it's mazak, it's very soft. And if you, even vapor blasting can be too hard for these. So difficult to clean. But I'm not recommending either way you pay your money you take your choice you've got your original to completely refurb them and upgrade them to like premier standards 125 per carb 165 per carb for a new premier it's entirely up to you i think that's including that and everything on on both so now that's all i can say i mean in our case we got uh, for various reasons we've gone we've gone for the new carbs that's, as I say, it's your decision. And in our case, the decision was we go for the new carbs. Okay, so just while we're here, if as we said, there's two carbs really in one. You've got the pilot circuit for idle, and then you open the throttle for the, the main, uh, sort of the main carburation. Now, if you want to adjust the, uh, the actual carburation during the throughout the rev range that's when you forget the pilot circuit forget messing about with this screw the only thing to do is to change the uh, metering of the fuel in the air so ways to do that are for fit, fitting a different size cutout so this is a four uh, that's a three and a half so the four as you can might be able to see there it's got a bigger cutout than the three and a half so that's leaner or you can adjust the needle height 
okay or you can fit a different needle jet or a different main jet now to some extent i'm going to i get this wrong but so i'm going to refer to my email uh sort of crib sheet so this is really important so up to up to an eighth of the throttle everything's through the pilot jet so that's tick over right so if you've got a problem with the tick over it's the pilot there's nothing else okay but then if you're if you think you've got a problem between an eighth and a quarter throttle then the problem might be the throttle cutaway and you might try a different size cutaway on the slide from a quarter to three quarters the needle position and also the size of the needle and i think the actual size of the needle jet come into play so if you think you've got too rich too lean a quarter to three quarter throttle you can try ultra nose and then the main jet is three quarter to, to fully open if you think that's that's wrong then you change the main jet but that's all through trial and error but what i'm trying to say is that screw won't do anything when the throttle's open and if things that you think things are too rich too lean or whatever then you've got to start playing about with different jets and needles and slides and so on which is it's very easy to then get lost in that believe you me i've done it <laughs> you know you replace that and then you change that and then change that and then something works and something doesn't and which one which one's had the effect and which one hasn't and you're taking the carbs off putting them back on ad infinitum so you have to be you, you know careful about that I would say, you know, leave it at standard. If, unless you're doing racing or whatever, and unless you live on top of Mount Olympus or whatever, leave it as standard. Because if you live up a mountain, obviously the air is thinner. Um, that, that, that's my advice. But, uh, you know, everyone will give you different advice. It's the same with all these videos I meant to say at the beginning. You know, what I'm doing on these videos is, is how I do it. Uh, other people will do it totally different and they'll give you completely different advice so don't take my advice the way i do things as as like law it's just my opinion it's the way i do things and it's the same with the carbs all i can say is get as much advice think about it as much as possible and then make a decision which way you're going to go okay is it all sweetness and light with the premiers well, no, not particularly. I mean, there are problems. I think um, sort of quality control isn't great. So I'd always recommend completely stripping every Premier carb down just to check everything's okay. Um, now, for instance, um, on their website, <coughs> excuse me, on the AMAL website, it says that the needle should be in... Uh, top position whereas in the manual and uh, everywhere else i've checked it is indeed needle in the middle uh groove uh so it's very confusing and uh so i'm going to stick with middle groove that's how they came all the carbs came with uh the clip in the middle groove so i'm going to stick with that but on the website it definitely says number one which is top groove uh second thing is um i was talking about these pilot jets before there can you see those three rings there those three grooves okay that shows it's 19 uh this is the largest pilot jet then there's 17 which is two grooves and 15 which is one groove now according to amal these are all fitted with 17s which is a standard for the t160 but these are obviously 19s all three carbs are 19s so i've run email and they said oh right yeah well we've experimented with 19s but we decided to keep 17s so i said well all mine have come with 19s and they said well oh well should make that much difference anyway well this is fair enough i i have 19s in my trident in my t160 but you know you just got to be careful because they say it's top groove and it's middle groove they say they're 17s and they're 19s there's little things like that you just got to be careful of i'm sure to be honest with the uh, amount of adjustment you've got on the um, air screw it doesn't matter really if they're 17s or 19s because when we come to tune because of course this only does the idle pilot circuit and so that screw um sets uh, the mixture of the uh, idle circuit so by 
there's enough adjustment in there. It doesn't matter if it's 17s or 19s, but, you know, it's just a, a silly thing. Then we're going to come to that issue of uh, float heights. Now, let me say that I am not a great devotee of setting float heights perfectly. If you've ever seen one of these things run, when the engine's running, the fuel in there is bouncing around like you've never seen. You know, the float's going up and down because, you know, as soon as you start the engine, let alone as you go out on the road, the fuel is bouncing about all over the place. So, you know, getting an exact float height doesn't really matter. What the float height should be is when you push down on the tang, not on the actual needle itself. Am I in the right place for the camera? I think so. I hope it's focused as well. I don't know. Okay, when you push down on the tang, then just as it just where it um actually shuts it should be the float should be just below this set of surface it's two millimeters or something like that okay so you press on the tang and when the float needle shuts that's the position so it's difficult for me to do it but yeah mine's maybe a bit low but yeah, that's okay. Mine's probably about three mil below, which is fine. What I'm saying, you don't want a float that's miles out either way. But in my book, and this is only my book, it doesn't matter that much how exact your float heights are. Because as I say, as soon as you start the engine, the petrol's bouncing about in there like nobody's business. As long as there's enough petrol, as far as I'm concerned, to go through the jets and that, you should be okay. But that's my opinion. But obviously, it's always worth setting it right. So two, maybe three millimetres just below the uh, level. And then all you do, if it's not, all you do is simply bend the tangs. Okay? You simply uh, take this off and just bend those tangs. Okay, so I'm going to do that with all the carbs. I'm going to check them, take them apart, make sure that all the jets are clean. There's no swarf. That's another thing that I've heard. I've not had that problem, but there's you know, bits of swarf left over here and there and maybe uh, in the... Uh, in the bottom of the the float bowl just check everything's okay because but we have uh yeah we've gone for premieres but you know it's, it's up to the individual you know one in, you know six one half does the other really depends what you want Do you want the bike totally original or or what okay but we've gone for the we've gone for the new premieres but yes do check them because there can be inconsistencies and slight problems in the manufacturing process. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to then start, um, I'm going to clean up, I'm going to go off camera for a bit, I'm just going to clean up country. The These are the clips that go back on the top uh, of the, uh, on the tops of the, uh, the carb okay and these come off the old ones again these are a triumph part they don't come with a carb and as you can see they're pretty monkey so i'm just going to clean up bits like that and then we'll start uh, reassembling the carbs and just to mention that if you want any more detailed information about what's on the videos then there is the workshop manual that goes uh, alongside the videos and that covers restoring the whole bike not just the engine uh, and that's available from all uh, good booksellers around the world. You can just put my name, uh, Chris Rook, into the search bar, like Amazon search bar or wherever, and it, uh, and it should come up.